Oh, it's me. There's definitely a few pros and cons to being a chief everything officer. I would talk to myself and then make a decision. <laughs> as soon as I delegated even that first little part of what I was doing, I stepped into a role as a leader. Hi, I'm Erin Deering and you're listening to The Work. So when you start a business, you are actually the CEO. You are the chief everything officer. So you're the marketer, the cleaner, the delivery man, the accountant, and a ton of other roles. But how long should you actually do this for? And is it bad to be this kind of CEO? So in this episode, I'm gonna share with you how we earned millions upon millions of dollars as just a team of two, and how I actually struggled to delegate my roles to grow the business, and how you can stop being a chief everything officer and start being a more flourishing founder. All right, so I'm gonna start with The Lean Startup. Now this is a book by Eric Rees and I've actually, <laughs> I've actually never read this book, but Craig had, had read it several, several times and basically he wanted to build Triangle off this idea of The Lean Startup. So he gave me little bits of the book we actually had. So when we moved into Hong Kong on the back of our door, he painted the back of the door with chalkboard paint, you know, that black chalkboard paint, and then wrote all the key messages of the book on the back of our door. And then we referenced those pointers for the start of the business and really it's kind of how we got going. So we based our business in the beginning and as much as we could for as long as we could based on the lean startup. So I'm gonna read you a little a little bit from my new book. Uh oh, oh. Um, kind of about a little bit about why. So this extremely lean setup was why Triangle was so heavily profitable from almost day one. But while it was a fantastic setup financially, it was too much in terms of workload. And whenever we held a meeting with any external provider, they were gobsmacked and in almost disbelief over the lack of staff and infrastructure at Triangle. We were making millions of dollars in revenue with a team of two and a few other contractors handling the necessary accounting and supply chain management. So as I mentioned in that passage of that book, we were doing everything, just the two of us. So, you know, I was working 20 hour days. I was uploading product, dispatching orders, replying to customers, finding Instagrammers to gift, every single thing within the business that was related to customer care, marketing, PR strategy was under my role roles and Craig did all the other design, financial, accounting bits and pieces. So we were really taking on a phenomenal amount of work between the two of us. So of course in the start, I was doing all these roles and hustling really, really hard. That didn't change when we started making millions of dollars because I was still doing all those roles. And a normal day for me would get up, you know, between five and 6 a.m., pull the laptop onto my lap, start replying emails to customers, writing, I love writing a to-do list at the start of every day or adding to my to-do list. I probably didn't write a new one, I just added to the one from the day before because that definitely didn't get finished. And it would be replying to emails, social media work in terms of finding new customers, pack, picking and packing the orders. We were still doing that when we were probably turning over a million dollars of revenue. I was still picking and packing every order, trudging it down. So every day, Craig and I, and this is when we realized the buck had to stop and we had to find other solutions to our dispatch is that I would pick up, I would, we, would, we would print the orders in the morning and there would be like 50 to 100 to 150 orders. And then I would have to hand write hand write everyone's address on there. We had no automated system. And because we were using Hong Kong Post, there was no automated anything. This is back in, you know, 2013. So I would hand write every, and I would pre put in the sender address, which was our address in Hong Kong, but I would have to write every single person's address to, on like a hundred orders a day, and then write them out, actually pick the orders from our little, we had this, this little storage container, like little, you know, from Ikea, like shelves. And that was literally next to our bed. And I would pull all the bikinis out, pack them all, put them all in their little bags, put the labels on. And then Craig would start, when I'd get to about 20, he would start doing runs of those. He would go down to the post office, drop them off, wait in line, and then come back up with this big plastic tub and do it again. And so that, that was from about 7 a.m. until midday, every single day. So half our day was lost to dispatch, which is so not 
the way two founders should have been doing their business, but we didn't have any other choice. So when we started doing well, and we started having a lot more meetings, we were meeting with agencies a lot, and you know, modeling agencies and PR agencies and different people in different areas because there were, you know, we had all this growth. We would always have to pretend that we had an office and that there was more more of us. It was because I was a little bit embarrassed at the fact that we had this pretty big business and it was just Craig and I still working out of our apartment. We'd moved apartments by this stage, but we're still working out of our apartment. And so, people, you know, I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm just working from home today. Yeah, just working from home today. <laughs> There's no office. I was always working from home. So there's definitely a few pros and cons to being a chief everything officer. And the first one being we were super profitable and that's a great plus, you know, it's great when you are doing everything and therefore there's no one else taking away your earnings. But then on the flip side, everything is on you. You know, everything was on me. I was doing, I worked out, I was doing five part-time roles or four part-time roles, four or five part-time roles, which is sort of, you know, if you think about it, it's, tw it's 20 hours a day of work across, across those roles. That's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. It's also a ton of pressure between Craig and I in the sense of neither of us could drop the ball. I couldn't have a sick day. I couldn't have a day off. I couldn't have half a day off. It was, if I took any time off the business, I would have to make it up later that day. So if I had a break for an hour or two, it meant going to bed an hour or two later. There was no, there was no leniency in terms of how much work I had to do. So doing these roles really does help you to be across everything, right? So I'm not saying that you, that you shouldn't do these five roles when you start a business. You really actually should, but what you need to understand is that it's not sustainable and it's only for a season that you need to hustle this hard and be across everything. And as a founder and as a chief everything officer, you need to know when to bring other people in to take some of the workload off you. All right, so after the break, I'm gonna unpack my journey. Now, this is towards letting go of some of my duties and how I actually lost my sense of importance. So don't go anywhere. So I had an unexpected thing happen when I delegated and I wrote about it in my book and I'm gonna share it with you now. I missed my safe place of supporting customers in feeling good about their bikini. And while I oversaw all the customer care employees and was still approving or gifting myself, my direct connection with my customers was gone. And I felt like the biggest hole in my heart. While this sense of emotional loss was very slowly unfolding, without me being really aware of all of it happening, the perks and pitfalls of being so busy every day, Craig and I were able to achieve more balance in our personal lives as we outsourced more of our business commitments. So when I delegated, I felt this sense of loss. You know, I had to give up the bits of the business that I actually really liked the most because the bits that I liked the most were the bits that I was the best at, which were the bits that were the easiest to hand over to someone else. And then, after I delegated, on the flip side, the business really thrived of others focusing on their deliverables. So then we could focus what we really needed to do to scale and really step into that role as leaders. So I had this life balance suddenly, which was really lovely and it really allowed me to think about and focus on growing the business in a clever way and be more proactive and less reactive. And it felt really enjoyable to be in this season of actually kind of enjoying life. All right, guys, I am actually working on something at the moment. It's very exciting and I've been wanting to do this for a number of years and I cannot believe that it is almost here. Soon I'm gonna be launching a business and personal development group where I'll mentor you on growing your business whilst not ditching your self-love and your self-care. Now the waitlist is open, so head to erindeering.com, pop your name down so you don't miss out on the launch. So I think the lesson here is that you should really do everything yourself in the start when you have a startup. You know, it's a season, you need to be across everything. But as soon as I delegated even that first little part of what I was doing, I stepped into a role as a leader and I focused on leadership and the business started to grow. I was no longer in the trenches doing these roles, I was now being reported to as a leader. And the benefit of having been in the trenches as a chief everything officer is that then I knew the questions to ask and I knew what needed to be done by the people that were now effectively in those roles running the business. 
Okay guys, I wrote a book. I wrote a whole book. It's called Hanging by a Thread and it's out on September the 26th. You can pre-order your copy right now though by heading to Booktopia. The link is in the show notes. Okay, my loves, it is time to do uh, the work, the work, the work. So when I was doing everything and I needed to delegate just one thing, I chose the thing that was easiest for me. So I'm gonna ask you the question, if you need to delegate, delegate something that is the easiest thing to delegate for you. So whether it's something that you know you're not an expert at, whether it's something that you are an expert at, therefore you know that you can train someone else at well, you're gonna have to really look within here and, and know that one thing. Just do one thing. You can either train someone well or something that you know someone else can do better than you and set it up. So when it comes to delegating, you need to park your ego and put your business first and you need to give off. It could be something for me, it was customer care, the one thing I loved the most, giving that away was me parking my ego, my pride, my joy in a sense, for the betterment of my business. You need to do the same. You need to look at what you need to delegate. Whatever that's gonna be for you, it might be hard, it might be easy, it's probably gonna be hard, but that's the thing you need to delegate. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of The Work. Now I'm releasing two of these a week, so be sure you hit subscribe to the podcast. Now, if you're listening to this podcast, did you know that you can also watch me on Spotify and YouTube? And if you are already watching me, thank you very much. See you next week. Bye.